All right, hello everybody. My name is Jonathan Frappier. I'm here today to talk to you about how to use the new, reasonably new vSphere 6.5 APIs with Ansible. Uh, if you want to chat with me on Twitter, at jfrappier, uh, GitHub pages, the most important link for my note takers is the bottom one. Uh, the presentation's already up on SlideShare, so if you want any of the links, they're already there for you. So you don't have to write them all down. You get to listen to me uh, blabber. You can follow me um, on GitHub, jfrappier, my blog, jfrapp.com, and uh, the vbrownbag blog where I help coordinate all of the things. Uh, VMworld disclaimer, so if anything, anything I say here may uh, work today, it may not work tomorrow, and that is to be expected. Um, actually, some of the cooler vSphere APIs right now, when I look at the API Explorer, are actually in tech preview mode, so they may go away, but I think they're awesome. Uh, if you are able to start using these, if you're new to APIs or you're a seasoned API consumer, you start using these vSphere APIs, make sure you're letting VMware know uh, what you want to see out of these because that's going to drive uh, where development efforts go. Uh, so if you are using them, if you see something that's in tech preview and it's really cool and it's buggy or it's awesome, let them know because if you tell them it's awesome, uh, they'll keep it. If you tell them it's buggy, they'll fix it. Uh, if they don't hear anything, they'll assume nobody's using it. Uh, my disclaimer, when I say if, some, if I say something's cool or awesome, I mean in most cases it's cool or awesome. You may certainly have a use case where it's not cool or awesome. Um, this is one way you could do it. It's a pretty basic example I'm going to show you here just to get the point across. And I also can't draw seven red lines all perpendicular with transparent ink. Uh, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about uh, vCenter, uh, 6.5, the new vSphere APIs, and Ansible. If you don't know some of those things, that's okay. Um, if you've not used vSphere 6.5 uh, yet, that first link is a series we did on the vBrown bag covering all the new features of vSphere 6.5. Uh, if you don't know what an API is, next week on vBrownBag, we're starting a vBrownBag zero to a API zero to hero uh, series. So if you've never used an API before, you don't know what it is or how to use it or what it looks like, we're going to cover that. Um, Ansible, uh, we've got some uh, vBrownBags on that. And then a great intro to the v using the vSphere APIs. If you've not used them before, Kyle Ruddy uh, wrote a great blog post, that last link there. He'll walk you through how to get authenticated and start using those with something like Postman. So if uh, you've not done any of this before, since I've only got about 10, 12 minutes, I can't show you all the things, those are the links you're going to want to check out. So when I think about the use cases, right, coming from, uh, I'm at Dell EMC now, but 15 years before that in customer environments and having uh, decent sized production environments to support, some of the use cases that instantly came to mind when I heard these were coming out were, I've got my, my vCenter deployed. I was using the vCSA the day it came out because we were a Linux shop and my boss loved getting rid of, it, rid of anything that ran on Windows. So being able to use these APIs to control the configuration of my environment was the first thing that popped into my head. How do I make sure that somebody didn't go in and, oh, DNS isn't working, let me try changing the DNS servers. Nope, I absolutely do not want you to do that to my vCenter server. Oh, I've got a, I spun up a new NTP server because the other one I had was being flaky. If I want that changed, I want to control how that is being changed. I don't want people making arbitrary changes to my environment. So what I can do with Ansible, if you're not familiar with it, is I can control the configuration of, uh, of a virtual machine and application. So now, uh, in much that way, I can do that with the vSphere APIs, because there wasn't a great way with Ansible before to do configuration management. So I, I can now sort of build that myself uh, by consuming the vSphere APIs. So uh, just think of a scenario, right? One that I brought up before. Um, I've had this happen where auditors have walked into my environment and is like, you need to make this change. How am I gonna make that change? If I've got one vCenter server, that's not horrible. Uh, maybe I've got three or four vCenter servers, that's slightly less horrible, but also not great. Uh, but then when you start getting into scale or wanting to manage or maintain these and proving that your environment is in the state that you say it's in, I can define all of this as code. I can take my vCenter configuration, fully define it in a text file, and I can prove that it's that way just by running that Ansible playbook. So let's consider this scenario where I need to make sure that SSH is disabled on my vCenter server appliance. Pretty reasonable request, I would say, in many cases. Um, so the first thing that I would do is I would go over and look at the API Explorer. So this is available, this is just a web page. Uh, if you Google vSphere API Explorer, you can explore all the, the VMware APIs that are available right online. 
Uh, it's also bundled into the VCSA, so if you're, uh, if you're not staying up to date cutting edge on the latest versions, you might want to check that version just so you're not trying to use an API that maybe is in an older version. Uh, if they've released something new, um, it would likely be reflected here versus what's in the API Explorer uh, from, your, from your VCSA. So once I've gone through and found it, you can see down towards the bottom of the screen, like it lists all of the uh, APIs that are available. So I can do, I can get what the SSH setting is on my VCSA. So if I just want to know, I could just go query that get API and say, oh yes, is it enabled, true or false? I can do a uh, put to change that setting if I want to. So if I've defined what my configuration is for my vCenter appliance so that it works as I would expect it to work, I can call that put API and I can set it to whatever I want. And when I run that playbook, it's going to make sure that uh, that setting is either true or false. In this case, we want it disabled, so I'd set it to false. I can further explore in, the, in that API Explorer, good name for it, uh, what I need to do to uh, interact with that API. So in this case, it's gonna be looking for um, a JSON file. So uh, the example value enabled equals true, that would set it uh, SSH access on my VCSA to true. If I change that to false and ran my playbook, it would set it to false or in Postman or whatever I'm using to interact with the APIs. So that's my JSON file as far as Ansible is concerned. Pretty simple. Open bracket, enabled, false, close my brackets, that's the JSON file that I'm going to need. And I am going to call that in a playbook. Um, if you're not familiar with Ansible, the link we had I had up earlier will go over um, go over playbooks and what they do in roles. So this is just a, a simple example playbook. First thing I need to do is authenticate. So that first block up there, vCenter login, I'm actually logging in and authenticating and getting a token to interact with vCenter. I can't just go do things without logging in. And I'm gonna pass that uh, token that I've registered to the next task uh, to disable SSH. And all I'm doing is using, uh, pointing the body to that file I created here. So I've created that file and I've saved it in a file, the one, two, three, fourth line from the bottom. It's looking for SSH, SSH off.json and that's all that file was before. Now when I run that playbook, anytime I run it, SSH is gonna be off. So if I have somebody going in and making changes to the environment outside of my change control process, or some administrator, some junior admin, a developer that needs access and they wanna SSH things because they don't like putting in change control tickets, I can now enforce uh, the configuration. So I can do that for things like NTP, DNS, uh, make sure that my, my vCenter server is gonna work the way I want. Uh, and then the last use case is just really uh, career perspective. So uh, I would assume most people here are VMware admins, engineers, architects. We've been doing that for a little while now, and that's awesome. Uh, but we sort of, in my opinion, need to take it to the next step and start interacting with things more uh, as code. So defining my infrastructure as code, um, interacting with APIs so that I can do things and I can automate more is gonna be how I deliver value in the future. vCenter's great, and it delivers a lot of value to my business, but my salary to maintain vCenter, eventually I think my company would look at that and say, okay, we can hire somebody else or uh, uh, send out that uh, offshore and have somebody else do that job or send it to a consulting company and do that job. Um, I want to bring value to the company by automating things. So the more I'm interacting with this now, and it's a platform that I'm familiar with in vCenter and vSphere, if I learn how to use these APIs and consume them, I'll be able to automate things like having that auditor walk in the door and instantly be able to change the SSH setting or NTP server setting or DNS server settings on tens, hundreds, even thousands of vCenter server appliances, depending on how your big environment is. Uh, with just a few mouse clicks and I can move on to delivering uh, more value to my business. So for me, it's also really, uh, it's a cool technology to learn, but it's also um, uh, a great career uh, enabler. So, uh, and then this, this fellow here tweeted this, I, I couldn't have said it better, so I stole his tweet. So if he's here, thank you. Um, you can do it well uh, and eventually uh, you'll be automated. You can do it poorly manually and eventually be automated or you can be the automator. So be the automator. Uh, that's pretty much it to, to start using vSphere APIs with Ansible. If you're familiar with Ansible, super easy because it's just a playbook. Uh, we can turn it into roles. We can use things like variables in there to pass uh, information in instead of hard coding everything. Uh, and that's it. That's all I got.